Puddles. Puddles. What's up? Don't Just... fuck with me like that. You're gonna eat it. Don't make me look like a pussy on set. God damn it, Puddles! Is she peeing? Yeah. This... This is why we can't have nice things. I Puddles, after this, we're gonna have a talk. Puddles, come back! Daddy loves you! <laughs> Hey guys, this is Hang with Motherfucking Nathan, and this is. Hi, I'm Sophia Grace. Mm. Fuck yeah, and today we are making a steak pinwheel. What are you gonna put inside of it? We are gonna put spinach, onions, garlic, and mushrooms. Ooh. Oh, also, uh, what the fuck is this cheese called? Gruyere? Yeah, Gruyere. Gruyere? 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 Gruyere. Gruyere. <laughs> like it's French, so I'm not. Voulez-vous coucher avec moi? Yeah, you know, like my French is fucking awesome, so that's what it is. You working a lot? Oh, j j I'm just working all the time. Working, going to see my lady, all the fun stuff. But I think you have a more interesting story because you've been in longer than I have. Uh huh. And you have. I remember when I first met you. And I know this is gonna be, this come off sound real bad. I first met you and I was like, oh, here's a ditzy bitch like every other fucking porn person. And then over the years, by, you know, one this thing or that, I like actually really got to know you and I thought you were an amazing person. You were really cool and like you actually knowledgeable and shit. You actually seem like you're fun to talk to, you know? So it's like you were actually an amazing person. Sorry for having that first opinion on you. Hey, it's yeah. okay. <laughs> But, um, yeah, uh, so I always thought that you're, like, one of the few people that I fucking love being around, and I'm always bummed out when I don't get to ever see you on my call sheets. <laughs> because it's like, oh, Sophia's there. It's going to be an awesome day. I have someone cool to talk to. <laughs> and she's hot as fuck, so. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah, no problem. But, yeah, it's been, like, this trip, because I have, like, a very unconventional, like, journey in this yeah. industry, I'd what, say. Yeah, what you talking about? Because you came in, what, uh, how old were you? 18. 18, shit. Yeah. And uh, you came in, you're 18, and you went hard for a little bit, but then you left. Yeah, yeah. I think that was when you were doing yoga. Yeah. Because I I came in, and you were, like, you're, you're big, you're a pretty big name star, and I was like, ooh, I can't wait to work with her, and we both had the acquaintance of Jake Adam, bless his soul, um, and, but I never got to work with you then. Then you came back, mm -hmm. and um, how, did I, how did I meet you the second time? Did not you fuck on a couch? No, because the first time it was like I made someone squirt on set and you came up to me at one of Jake's parties and you're like, you don't make me squirt. And I'm like, you just came up to me and like, but you were like, you didn't talk to me and like, that was the first thing and it was just kind of one of those irritating like, fuck, I'll fine. I'll fuck you if I can film it <laughs> or something like that. And then we fucked and then we fucked again on the couch after that day I oh, fucked yeah. everyone. Yeah, because I was jealous. Yeah, I'm who? I was jealous of the fact that everybody else got sex and I didn't get sex. <laughs> Because back in those days, I was like, I, I couldn't find a good fuck buddy to save my life, uh, you know? It's really hard because everybody wanted me for a night because back in those days, it was like, I just, I worked all the time. And so, yeah. like, a lot of dudes that weren't in the industry didn't want that. Yeah. And so, it was really hard to find people that consistently wanted me mm -hmm. for, like, you know, more of a long-term thing. And I'm not even talking relationships. It's just like... I like consistency. Yeah. Anyway, so, like, I just couldn't find a fuck buddy, and it was really hard. But, like, I also had, like, like I was saying, super unconventional, because when I got into the industry at 18, I didn't really have many tattoos. I still have my natural hair color. Um, however, I blew up. Like, mm -hmm. I was working 28 days a month. Yeah. And I did that for like a whole year. Yeah. And then I got so burnt out. And honestly, when I was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. when I was young, I just kind of I partied too much too, you know. Yeah. So I needed to go back home and like recenter myself because I felt like I got into the industry way too young. Do, do you think that it should be the thing when you're not 18 to I do think, this job? Yeah, I think you should be 21. I even think 21 is too young. Yeah. However, I think that at that age, like, you know, you've been on your own for a little bit. Like, you yeah. can make your own grown person decision. But, like, 18, you're just, like, fresh out of high school. Even, like, maybe you're not even out of high school. Yeah. I, um, I don't know if you know Autumn Falls, but... Uh, Autumn Falls, but... She's, like, mixed, Marcus Dupree. Yeah, Marcus, yeah. She was in high school when she started. Oh, God. 
Like, that's fucking weird to me. Yeah. I don't think that should even be allowed. Now, mind you, she's, like, one of the best performers ever. Yeah. And she, like, grew her brand so quickly. But, like, she had a different type of drive than I had. Because I came in as, like, a religious chick just trying to experience mm -hmm. what this was all about. Like, playing devil's advocate. Yeah. Getting comfy in the uncomfy. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, after a year, it just, I like, couldn't. So then I took, like, seven months off. Went back home, reset myself. God, it smells good. It does smell really good. And I came back with a plan. Um, and then I got still kind of lost because I came back and I think that was when I had like a shaved head. Yeah, it was hot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so then I came back in with like part of my head shaved and I had to like rebrand myself because yeah. I had got the arm tattoo and the thing that I think that affected me the most was my hip. Mm. And so I oh, had. Yeah, huh? yeah, because yeah. it was so big. And, like, I ended up rebranding myself. My agents told me that I wasn't going to be able to and it was going to be slow for me. And I was like, no, fuck that. Like, I don't care what you say. I'm going to do what I want to do. I know I'm a good performer. And, like, I actually genuinely like my job. Yeah. Um, and then I got up to, like, shooting 15 to 20 times a month for, like, years. And then that's when I went to yoga school. Mm -hmm. Took that break, came back, <laughs> rebranded myself again as a blonde. <laughs> And then that's when I actually had the goal. Like, I was like, I'm not going to work as much because I was, like, at a point where I just wanted to do better things. Like, better scenes with better companies rather than just taking anything that I can get. Yeah. And being more selective with my talent just because I just felt like if I'm not going to have good chemistry with you on set, why am I going to do this? Agreed. Um, and, like, to some directors, that's super snooty, but, like, the directors that are about producing great content, they respected that. Yeah. So, I just kind of, like, I had the goal of, I don't want to be the top, because mm -hmm. I fucked up that plan when I got out the first time. Yeah. However, I want to make as much money as the top, um, and end up with a feature dancing contract, and do all the things that, like, the top does. And even then, I was still in the top 100 on free ones. Like, literally, even, like, four months ago, I was still 84 in the world. Damn, girl. And I don't know how. Like, I, I really don't know how. Like, well, this just really shows how much, how, like, awesome you are on set. I'm like, I literally, I literally miss getting to work with you just because of, it's so easy. It's so much fun. In, like, okay, like... A couple days ago, I did a scene, right? Yeah. And you're getting to the end of the scene, right? And the director, I'm trying to get him to tell me, like, hey, when do you want me to pop? Mm -hmm. Because at a certain point, this girl is just feels like she's she's over it, you know? Yeah. And it is cool. I'm having a hard time, but I'm on top. I'm doing all the fucking work. Yeah. And so I'm like, I just need you to give me a little bit more because I need to pretend like this is still fun for both of us, you know? Mm -hmm. I've never had that problem with you. Never. Ever. Ever. You know? Well, I just, I my whole idea is to make the person on set with me feel like they're my boyfriend for the day. And that's what I try to do. You know, most times, at least. It's kind of hard with some people. But, uh. like, I got really lucky because towards the end when I was, like, shooting all the time, I was pretty much only working for, like, Elegant Angel, Evil Angel, Wicked. Yep. And, like, Kink and New Sensations. Yep. And I was still shooting, like, 12 times a month. Yeah. And it was only with performers that I enjoyed. And also, I didn't like how agents thought that they owned you. Yes. And then I didn't like how directors felt like if your call time was 3 p.m., that you can start shooting at 8 p.m. Yeah, that's your time. Um, I just felt like I was just a captivated animal, and I wasn't treated like a human. Yes, well... I don't, yeah, 100%. I agree with that. Uh, at a certain point, I don't think anyone treats performers like they're humans. No. Uh, some performers, I don't think, deserve to be treated like humans. But uh, agreed, because I I know from my experience that uh, whether that's the crew sometimes, whether that's the agents sometimes, whether that's, uh, well, the fucking girl I'm working with, they don't always treat you like you're another person, so... But that's why I have this show, so I can treat people like this. <laughs> and be like, here, let me talk to you for free and feed you food for nothing. Because I want to remind people that this is humanity. <laughs>
<laughs> I love that like fake laugh at the end. <laughs> Do you feel callous now that you've been in the industry for as long as you have? Like how so? Like um, just towards people, towards I don't know, like towards human emotion. Uh, sometimes uh, I have harder time with some things than others. Mm -hmm. um, if you have me working every day, which you you've seen my schedule. Mm -hmm. There's some days when I'm months where I'm working every fucking day. Yeah. I am completely calloused over by the end of that. I've had times where I just want to go cry in the shower. But I got a puppy now, and that helps a lot. Except right, I, puddles? Puddles. Because that dog is always stoked to fucking see me. So I come home, and I'm like, oh my god, I hate Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I hate everyone. But you love me, so it works out. But do you feel like you get callous moments like in your own personal life as well? Like towards meeting new people? Not even like relationship-wise, mm. because I feel like for myself... I get like that a lot where I just like, I've gotten so antisocial because of this industry. Yes. Like, I feel like I developed social anxiety, whereas before I did not have that. Now, I, I was talking to people about this the other day and they're like, no, you just get older. I'm like, I don't know, man, because I used to love, love being around people. Like every day I want to be around people. I like that. I like human mm -hmm. interaction. But this job has definitely got me to a place where I'm like, I, when I get done with work, I won't talk to anyone. I don't want to deal with anyone. I don't want to be around people. And, man, it, it just takes it out of you. So, yeah, I do feel like this job is takes a lot. And I don't feel like people truly understand that either. Um, I mean, like, even for myself, like, I still will shoot here and there just mm -hmm. to kind of stay relevant with my feature dancing. Um, yeah. Now... At this weekend, I went to XBiz convention because of Nicole Aria because she was like, she's new and she wasn't prepared. And mm. I was pissed because I'm like, girl, you told me last minute and I'm moving and I'll have to let, let go of all my furniture shopping and just mm. come with you because I didn't want her to fail. Like, I was just, yeah. yeah, I've been through this shit so many times, but I only committed to two hours per day. And then I said, I'll go with you to the awards. And then Kevin ended up coming to the awards as well, which made it 10 times better for me. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, after the two hours or like maybe two and a half hours, yeah. I literally like just remember fucking wanting to just punch a pillow. Yep. Yeah and like put mute in my headphones and just not hear anything like not even hear a refrigerator just yeah. just be completely quiet but now like i'm just so picky on who i'm around because a i feel like people want to know me because of my connections or b people know that i've been around in the industry for a while so they feel that i'm going to be very open sexually yep and then I'm going to want to do all these, like, gnarly things because I've taken, like, two dicks in my ass at the same time. Seen it. Have you? Yeah. Mm. Jerked off to it. Oh, really? Yeah. Ah. Ah. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Nice. Now you know. Did you just, like, you know, watch it on the hub? Were you, like... Oh, yeah. I didn't pay for it. I, I do enough work. <laughs> I do enough work for this fucking industry. I'm not going to pay for my porn. I get that. Yeah. I totally get yeah, that. Yeah, you'd definitely be one of the people I might, uh may consider watching paying for your only fans don't know, don't know. <laughs> no i feel that wait so were you like sophia grace and then oh like, you know i look for you this was the, okay remember when we did the uh eye on the guy the one where you like had to eat the shit out of my asshole oh yeah, yeah. not not actually eat the shit out of my asshole but like she just it was a lot I of like to town yeah she went to town but after that i was like oh my god i'm and you were gone for a while <laughs> after that so i ended up looking for your pornos and jerked off it oh nice mm. Yeah, I took two dicks at my ass quite well. Yeah. I think it was a legal porno. It was. Yeah, it was yeah. a legal porno. But it was quite weird because when I was in Europe, I thought that I was going to do all these intense scenes. Yeah. However, I ended up doing like 78 scenes and only three of them were intense and the other 75 were romantic pornos. Huh. Yep. Weird. I got typecasted because I'm blonde and I speak English, so they wanted me for all the romantic stuff, making love. And I actually told Proxy Page, because she was my agent at the time, I was like, dude, I'm tired of making love. Like, I, I need something more than this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm getting so callous to this. Yeah. But, I mean, here we are now, eight years later. Yeah. We're, we're alive.
And honestly, I will tell you, anybody that's gotten into this industry, if they say that this industry doesn't fuck you up at all, yeah. they're lying. Oh, 100%. I think the people who say that are ones that are just hiding their feelings and or brand new and they're like, this job makes me so horny. I'm so horny. I'm like, yeah, now give it two months of work and doubles every day and then come talk to me. It's like, it's, yeah, it's just, no. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like, dude, it's, it, like, this job leaves a mental scar on you just because you have to do something that's so passionate and sexual with lots of people, but at the same time, those people don't always want to fuck you. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, it's not, like, and I don't get to fuck them. And so it's like, even if you have, like, these little moments of, like, really good passion, it's quarter of what it would be like at home. That because I don't get to that. really be inside you, and I don't really get to enjoy you, and then I, like, at the end of the scene, I'm like, I want to say, hey, let's fuck again, please, God. And, but instead, I have to go home. And so you, you just see, you're like, <gasps> bye. Oh, yeah. And also, too, it gives you, like, unruly, like, sexual expectations when yeah. you're, like, not shooting. Like, for instance, man, I'll tell you, it's so hard if a dude doesn't have, like, like a, a bigger dick. Mm. Like, for me, personally, I am so... Not, I like anal too much, and like I like like big things yeah. going up there. So it's like, if it's not big, like mm. I don't like it, and so now it fucks me up in the real world because mm, yeah, you're just not, you're not always gonna get that, and so now like I just have like I'm like pretty much Kevin is like he's my fuck buddy. That's like what I do. I don't fuck the world anymore. Yeah. Like I found my good good, and that's like the the vibes. Great. I'm shooting yeah. um, for Cherry Pimps in two days. Who with? I'm doing a pegging scene. A yeah, Cherry, Cherry Pimps? Pimps has a new um, site launch for pegging. Oh! Yeah. Shit! Yeah. Trying to get pegged? Not really. <laughs> but when you look at me like that, I mean... It's... <laughs> Trying to have me uh, bend you over and <sighs> spread your cheeks. Just eat your asshole like it's my last meal. That's... Yeah, kind of now. Are <laughs> <laughs> you talking to I'm, I'm I'm scared. Can you hold my hair? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm good. Uh, but yeah, so um, I agree to it because I love being in control. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's neat. And also, it's like different. So I was like, "Fuck yeah, I'm totally down for it." And plus, Scott takes really good photos. Oh, that's why it's Scott and uh, yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I had to go get tested today and I Why, went it's a pegging scene. Huh? Why, it's a pegging scene. Because I'm also going to be fucked as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm going to bend him over and fuck him. Oh, nice. I don't know who the him is yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my God, this is so interesting. I feel like this takes focus. You're literally rolling meat. It's like meatloaf. Hard part is because it's supposed to be one piece, guys. I'd also like to make a very big point. This is my first time making this, and so <laughs> I'm like trying to remember all the steps. Let's see. Don't fuck it up. Yeah, right. pressure's on you. So if I go through here, cut it there. Yeah. Now you're getting like um, very village style. It looks like in Africa or like in the South American. Amazon forest. Hell yeah. That's what we try to do here at Hanging with Nathan. <laughs> I love your name, Hanging with Nathan. <laughs> yeah, I like to make things fun. And my thermometer is fucking over there. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I don't like a lot of dogs, but I love, like, puppies. Yeah. How can you not like puppies? It's just, I don't like dogs that bark constantly. Yeah, this dog doesn't bark. I am so blown away by that. What? You don't bark? Are you just a good girl all the time? Pretty much. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my god. Mm. My arm is her bed. It's turning into a whole vibe. Oh, there we man. go. Say hi to daddy. 
So what's your plans with the future? Are you like, are you just going to shoot every once in a while, just dance and just... So pretty much, um, I'm going to shoot probably like 10 scenes a year. Mm -hmm. Um, until my TikTok blows all the way up. Mm -hmm. Because my TikTok was blowing up and then I got really inconsistent. Mm -hmm. And then now I need to get back in the algorithm. Yep. So if my TikTok gets to like a million followers, mm -hmm. um, I won't be shooting ever again because even with feature dancing, I'll still be relevant because of TikTok mm -hmm. and I'll still be super popular. So then mm -hmm. I want to feature dance for like the next two, three years, bank as much money as I can, reinvest that money into crypto mm -hmm. um, and then get into commercial real estate, start investing into that, buy some property in Vegas, buy some property in Charlotte. Okay, so you got the same plan I do, except uh, it wasn't with TikTok. Yeah, <laughs> yeah mm. you know, it's new world shit. Yeah, adult shit. Yeah. This looks so fire. Oh, wait, I need that still. It's too fucking hot. So let's put this right over here, because that needs a rest for a couple minutes. That looks so good. Hopefully it will be. When I leave here, the best thing that I'm going to do, take a guess on what that's going to be. Shit. No. <laughs> That's not like the best thing ever. Uh, a nap? With my double XX espresso. Best thing ever. Ooh, get laid. I wish. Anal. I wish. That sounds fucking great. I'm so particular on who fucks my ass because, like, a lot of people are bad butt fuckers. It's true. Know why? Because not a lot of people get the chance. Yeah. It's like, it, one of the things is like, it's okay, it's like uh, me fingering the girls, like mm -hmm. actually like fingering them, right? I don't get enough practice at that, so I tell people, don't ask me to do it. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a, like any like gangbangs or whatever. It's like, I don't, I'm not that good because I've, I've had scenes where I failed enough to where I'm like, these aren't my expertise, you know? Mm -hmm. Anal, I can be good at, but I work with so many different people, everyone's a little bit different. So it's a little bit harder to suggest that it's like, I'm the best at it yeah. at all, you know? Yeah. So that's why I try to be very honest with all of those things. I'm like, I, I could, but I uh, don't know. You know, I could be, I could have the per parts that work better with you. I might not. I don't know. You know? I really do think it's like the way the dick is shaped and the way the butthole is shaped and yeah. all of that stuff. Because like, oh, and also what position are you? Because my yeah. dick points straight up. Yeah. So, yeah. you know? Like, certain people I fucking hate doggy with. Like, yeah. it, it hurts so bad. Mm -hmm. What I was going to say is, like, when I was, like, actively shooting all the time, I didn't really like anal as much as I do now. I feel like the older I've gotten, the more I enjoy it. That makes sense. How? Huh? How? Because you... Mm. Oh, that smells so good. Um, Because over time, you learn more about your body. You mm -hmm. learn what works better. So that's what I mean by that. It's like you get older and you start understanding things better than saying, uh, instead of saying like, just shove it in my ass, you know? Yeah, like now I'll judge people's vaginal sex first. And if they can't like fuck me right vaginally, then I will never allow them to be in my yeah. butt. If you're going to give anyone, let's, let's say females, right? Yeah. Or let females, guys. From all the years of being in this industry, okay. what would you, what, what information would you give them? Like, if they were thinking about wanting to join, because like, and I'm talking about like dead honest shit, like not like, well, you need to be in LA, you could be fit. I think go in knowing what you want to do in this industry. Go in with a plan, mm -hmm. because if you don't have any type of plan for yourself, the journey is way more stressful. Um, because you don't have any goal to work towards, as well as understanding the repercussion of being in this industry. Your looks are not going to last forever. You will not be in this industry forever. And realistically, most women aren't going to make it in this industry over a year because mm -hmm. it's so tough to maintain your brand. So with that being said, make your money, save your money, but also to understand that your whole life is going to be affected by this after you get out of the industry. Your relationships, your work, and if you're not an entrepreneur and own your own business, good luck getting a normal job because it's going to be quite difficult. 
So really just like measure out your pros and cons and if it's worth it for you, then fuck yeah, do it. But like really have like a substantial goal before getting into this business. Look at that. Let's see what this is like. Are you ready? Healthy. Ooh. It's a really nice flavor. The balsamic really does well. I wasn't sure if that was going to work, but that's nice. I think it brings it out more. Yeah. I do like it. I think it's nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You should play with this again. I'm going to. I'm going to. Yeah. Um, but, you know, why don't you tell you everyone where to where they can find you and stuff so you can actually just eat this and not have to talk anymore? <laughs> well, it's so nice to meet you guys. I'm Sophia Grace, and you can find me on Twitter at Sophia MF Grace, or you can follow me on Instagram. My Instagram has been deleted four times, so the Sophia MF Grace, or TikTok, my favorite platform ever, Lust for Sophia. And guys, this is another week of hanging with Nathan. I know we have fucked up a couple times on uh, the scheduling because of uh, COVID and life. Uh, so I'm going to be trying from now on to make this a weekly thing because it's just been hard. I might even try to make it multiple times a week. Wow. But that is the goal. So thank you so much for coming in, for subscribing. Uh, also, guys, we have fucking merch now. If you go to my Instagram uh, and go to my uh, what link tree. It says merch. You can find the Hanging with Nathan uh, shirts, uh, coffee cups, uh, world's best step bro, coffee mugs. Nice. Phone cases, jackets, anything you fucking want. If you want those parkour porn hub shirts, it's on there. So go check out the shit, guys, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much for coming in. Peace.